I'm not a real smart guy. And what I mean by that is I was born with ADD, ADHD. All, like, my brain cannot retain information. I'm not some genetic freak when it comes to running, when it comes to lifting weights. I'm, I am absolutely the bottom of the barrel. And people will never believe me. And they can just, you know, whatever. Believe what you want to believe. So when you ask me this question about what does studying look like for me, I have to go over the same page over and over and over and over again. While Jennifer can look at that page, while she's, you know, quizzing me, she'll learn it right then as she's, she doesn't know anything about it. She will quiz herself or quiz me and learn it as she's quizzing me. It's the most frustrating thing in the world how my brain works. So what, I, so what I do is I literally sit there with a pen and paper and I have my books and I go through and have to write everything down every single day. I will study the same page until it's photographic memory from writing the same thing down. And then from there, I'll go back through and relearn again. So I'll learn the bulk of it, but then I'll go through and learn the small, things within that so if it's a medication I'll learn what the medication does I'll first I'll learn how to even say the medication because these medications aren't like you know like albuterol no it's, it's it's very big words so I'll go through learn how to say the name and I'll go through learn what the dose is and I'll go through and this is like every single day it's not like oh I got it let's just go through no nothing is I got it every single thing that's so I, I, I can't wait to get in this conversation because everything I do in life, it sucks. Everything I do in life, it sucks. That's why when I was 300 pounds and 24 years old, it wasn't like I had some big epiphany of let's just go be a Navy SEAL and let's lose some weight. No, I knew my entire life was going to be a struggle, which is why I just ignored it. And I said, I'm not even trying to jump off into this shit and learn how to read, how to write, how to memorize, how to become something I am not. But through that process, something happened to me. And I realized, that's, this is why I feel sorry for no one. Because people are gonna think that I am maybe lying or maybe fibbing or exaggerating. No, I am literally, I was the lowest form on earth, no talent, no ability to learn, and I literally know what it is to be rock bottom and to build that up. The road to success is rarely a straight line. For me, it's always been more like a maze. Many times when I thought I'd finally cracked the code, had it all figured out and found the straight path to certain victory, I hit a wall or got spun into a turnaround. When that happens, we have two choices. We can stay stuck or regroup back up and try again. That's where evolution begins. Hitting those walls time and again will harden and streamline you. Having to back up and formulate a new plan without any assurances it will ever pan out will tune your say up and develop your problem. Solving skills and your endurance, it will force you to adapt. When that happens hundreds of times over the course of many years, it is physically exhausting and mentally draining and it becomes damn near impossible to believe in yourself or your future. A lot of people abandon belief at that point. They swirl in the eddies of comfort or regret, perhaps claim their victimhood and stop looking for their way out of the maze. Others keep believing and find a way out, but hope to never slip into a trap like that ever again. And those skills they'd honed and developed with her. They lose their edge. I am always on the hunt for another twisted pretzel of a maze to get lost in because that's where I find myself. The smooth road to success is of no use to savages like me. That may sound ideal, but it won't test us. It doesn't demand belief, so it will never make us great. We all build belief in different ways. I clock countless hours in the gym where I log thousands of reps and run and ride my bike obscene distances to cultivate belief. Despite what you may think 
I don't consider myself an ultra athlete because those races are not who I am. They are tools. Each one provides me a stockpile of faith. So when I get stuck in the maze of life like a broke down savage, I still believe I'm capable of achieving my unreasonable goals, such as becoming a smoke jumper at 47 years old, no matter what society or the good doctor says. I don't mean to suggest that you must run 100 or 200 miles to believe you have what it takes to get where you wanna go. That's what I had to do based on the depth of the darkness I came from and the scale of my ambitions. But if you've lost it, you do need to find your way back to belief. Whatever it takes for you to believe that you're better than good enough to achieve your dreams is what you must do. And remember, your greatness is not tied to any outcome. It is found in the valiance of the attempt. I'm an artist. And every day I'm, putting, I'm, I'm painting Mona Lisa. Every day. And, but it's a different one. It's not the same painting. So every day I wake up, even though I do the same thing, it takes a different way to get there. So every day in my mind, I'm going through my mind, I'm just like, and a good painter will not just paint. He needs to create. And you can't create the phones and everything going around you. So you gotta block yourself off. You only do two podcasts in a year. You block yourself off and you're, and you're painting this thing inside and you're going through all these different colors of paint and everything else. And you can only figure out the right painting if you spend the correct amount of time in your brain. So every single day, I'm literally going with my mind and I'm painting, I'm creating this, this masterpiece. And the masterpiece is always myself. And But to do that, you cannot have any distractions. Because if you're talking to an artist and he's trying to think about the next painting, he, he can't. So it's impossible to listen to you and listen to what your mind and body are telling you we must do. People don't do enough of. They don't do any of it. You're, they don't have passion. They, they lack passion, drive, determination because you haven't spent time with yourself. Your mind will tell you what is next. But you haven't spent the time to go, all right. Let me just figure this out. You're looking for, let me Google this and let me Google that. And let me, you're not going to find it there because there's billions of people in this world. And they're all supposed to be individuals. But we have a pack mentality. That's why you're so fucking lost. Why am I so unique? I'm being exactly what the f I was supposed to be. I ain't follow shit. And when I did follow shit, I was like everybody else. The second I said, okay, man, hang on, dude. You don't like this. You don't like this. You don't like this. Who are you, David Goggins? Who are you supposed to be? Miraculously, all these things just... Uh, I, I couldn't even... The, the list of shit I had to do just wham. It's like, fuck, okay. Wow. Once you sit down with yourself and say, okay, I don't want to be like Michael Jordan or Jim Brown. They both put on my birthday. So I, I looked at their birthday and said, oh, my, maybe I can be one of these. I can't. I'm going to be David fucking Goggins. And that looks like this. It just came. Everything flooded. So every single day of my life, there's a different thing that comes up that I have to do. We've all experienced it before. There's something we have to do. But even though we know this, we can't convince ourselves to sit down and get it done. Instead, we are overwhelmed with all of the distractions surrounding us. Our thoughts run rampant, eclipsing the voice in the back of our head, telling us to get back on track. We feel out of control, like we can't take charge of our own actions. Temptations are all around us, and foolishly, we keep giving in to them. If this scenario resonates with you, then you are more than likely suffering from a lack of self-discipline. Self-discipline is all about being able to have control over yourself and what you do say or think. Because we live in a society that prioritizes pleasure over logic, we fail to realize that self-discipline is integral to our success in life. Without self-discipline, there's very little that we can accomplish. 
no matter how big our hopes and dreams are. We can't get to the place we want to be in life just by dreaming. Achieving success requires action. Self-discipline is important for a variety of reasons, but the major one is the fact that having self-discipline can completely change the trajectory of your life for the better. You will not only be healthier and happier once you master self-discipline, you will also find that you are a much more successful person in business, relationships, and numerous other areas of life. Self-deprecation is no longer looked down upon. Rather, it is expected. We limit ourselves by downplaying our abilities, and as a result, many people do not realize the power that they have within them. No matter how much you feel like your abilities are lacking, you are capable of achieving great things. Both in your professional life and your personal life, you have the strength deep inside you to fight your way through anything life throws at you, no matter how tough. Developing a strong sense of self-discipline can completely change your life. This is coming from someone who has experienced first and how self-discipline can lead to great success. Before gaining a strong sense of control over my life, I often felt hopeless and lost. Now, I am on track to achieve many great things and I consider myself a highly successful person. I firmly believe that I would not have been able to achieve what I have today if it wasn't for the fact that I dedicated myself to learning about self-discipline and how to apply it to my own life. Every day you know it gets dusty. And every day you don't start with the with the victories. You don't go, oh, this is nice. Look at my look at my I love me. Well, let me clean up this little dusty. No, I go right for the things that are gonna keep me buried. And I go right there first, because if I don't clean those out first, the day doesn't start. So what are you saying to me is truth. And like I told you many times today, I can never figure out how to explain this to people because I'm not neuro nothing. I'm just a guy that said, okay, we got to start in the dungeon and we got to stay here for the rest of our lives. For you to become successful, the dungeon is a place that has to be clean. And it's the scariest place to be. That's why I'm misunderstood because I'm speaking from the dungeon. That's why I am successful. Because I go there every damn day. And that is the truth what he says. It's the exact truth. Those cabinets are dusty, dirty, and scary as Broken glass, dark, spiders, cobwebs, but most of all, your biggest fears. The biggest things that put you in the the place you are today are in there. So we all like to keep them shut, even like to lock them up, act like they never happen. So we never grow, we never improve, we never have real conversations like we're having right now. Never, never. Oh no, 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 no. Let's not. No, no, no. Let's not go there. I talked to so many people who tell me that. Let's talk about this, because they'll tell me, but they can only say it once. And they'll say it in passing. They won't get deep in the weeds with it. Like, you can't just clean it. Mother, you got to spit shine that mother. You got to relive it. Every fucking detail of it. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah my dad beat me. And, you know, you know it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is, mother. It's, it's killing you. It's taking over your whole fucking life. But that's the conversation. Yeah, my dad beat me. I'm fine now, though. I'm good. Okay. All right. No, you ain't. You ain't fine. You ain't fine. This is this is real talk. You don't have that. So your boy's right. 100 percent right. Scary as shit. It's scary as shit. But makes you who you're supposed to be. And that's the test. We forget. We, we think we're supposed to breathe air and have kids and pay the bills. And shit. And we're like, what, what's this life about? Make no sense. Being tested, my friend. Tests come when you have not studied. Tests come when you 
think that you're in a great place, that's, that's the test. The test is every day of your life. And most of us fail because we don't know why we're here. Because we don't go inward to say, oh, you gave me a lot of shit to fix, man. And this test sucks. But then you start.